Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will learn how to do validation for uh, our database fields. Uh, let us start an application and do something that we have done earlier. So I will start a new project. And I will call it validation application. Now in this project, I will go ahead and create a new data source, connect to my customer's database, select all the tables, and finish. Okay, let us bring the customers into the form. We will dock it. If you remember last time we did a lookup, we can do that also here. We have the city ID, which is a text field. We want to make it a combo box. And we change the data source to what? Where are we getting it from? Cities, where the display member is city, and the value is city ID. We can also change the header to make it city. Okay, so this is something that we have done earlier. Let us take a look at the application. In this application, we have different fields, usually represented in text boxes, where I can go and change each, for example. And we have our city using the lookup technique that we learn. But common to data entry is that the user who's entering the data might not enter the correct data. And this would affect the integrity of our database. So a technique to solve this problem is to do validation. Now, you can easily do validation here. You've already learned how to do validation for your text box. So this is a text box. If I can say, for example, if this is empty or uh, incorrect data, then do something. The problem with this technique is that if I have a new form and I bring again data from the database, I would have to repeat it. So today we will learn a better technique to do validation through uh, the database itself. Okay, so let us do that. I'll show you here, for example. Right now, if the customer name is important to me and I need it to be there, right now I can leave it empty, save the data, and nothing happens. Even a worse scenario that if this is required in the database, then your program will crash, and we don't want that. Okay? So let us see the solution. We go to our customer data set. Remember here, customer is the database name and customers is the, the actual table in there. So what I will do, I will say edit this in the designer. I will choose my customers table and say view code. Okay. Now, this actually gives me a partial class. A partial class is a class that inherits from another class everything that it has. So if we take a look here, we have the customer data set. This is the actual uh, database, like I said, and this is the customer's data table. 
Okay. If we take a look here at the drop-down menu, we see that the data table have events associated with it. In fact, we've been dealing with events from the beginning when we started with Visual Basic, like the click, the double click, you change the text box, etc. So the events that are associated with a database table are also something that we can trigger and do something when they happen programmatically. So if you take a look at, at this, for example, this is what we want. When a column change, a column like a phone, like a name, etc., look what happens. This gets created very similar to when we have buttons or text boxes in our form and we double click at them in the design view this will open for you the event similar to this one and this event actually has two parameters a sender which is the object that triggers it and it also have a data column change event called e okay and we will be using this e in our uh, program okay so what do we want to do at this point we want to uh, see the data that are available in my row that is being changed and check if it's correct or not, check if it's null, check if it's empty and so on. Um, just to show you that this E that I have, if I actually do E dot, I have many things available for me, but what I need is the row. Okay, so I'll be getting the row. To do that, First thing, I will declare a new um, variable, I will call it a row, as a customer's uh, row, okay? So basically, customers is referring to your customer's table, and it has, among other things, it has the customer's row. So basically, now the row that I'm looking at that is being changed is in this variable row. Okay, now row is equal to e, okay, dot row. Okay, now row has what I'm looking for. Now at this point, I can check if uh, the name or the phone number or whatever I need is uh, valid. So at this point, I will do validation and it's a simple if statement I will say if row dot is null so I'm checking if the row is null but what in the row remember your row your customer your student your employee uh, represents one record in your uh, table and therefore it has many uh, fields so what am I looking for in this row that I'm looking if it's null or not? Is it the phone number? Is it the customer ID? It is basically the name. So I'm asking if the name field in this row or record is null, okay, or else 